Good morning, you're listening to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Rick Holden, who's the chairman of the board of the NWFA, the National Wood Floor Covering Association. Rick, how you doing? Uh, great, thank you. You're at the end of your second term as chairman of the board, but before we go there, let's uh, first uh, set the stage here. We're down here in Dallas, Texas at the Gaylord Texan at the annual convention for the NWFA. Let's talk about, though, your day job first. You're the chief operating officer at Durr Distributing. Most people know Durr is one of the largest hard surface distributors in the U.S., based outside of Philly, serving the area from Virginia up to New York, right? That's correct. And how's business uh, at Durr? Uh, we're very pleased with our first quarter. Our company has good sales figures for the first quarter, and talking to a number of other distributors in, in the U.S., they seem to be having the same success this year. Mm-hmm. Now, Hurricane Sandy hit up there last year. Did that have an effect on your business? Uh, yes, it has. Unfortunately, we have seen an uh, increase in business from the Sandy victims, uh, and that's going to be a long, arduous process for all these people to get back in their homes. Uh, many, there are thousands and thousands of homes that are being uh, leveled at this point, and at some point, we'll, you know, we'll see, we will see some wood flooring benefits. We are seeing some more emergency stuff now, particularly out on Long Island and some parts of the Jersey Shore, but eventually, you know, it'll all get fixed, but it's going to be a multi-year project. So as you're putting together your 2013 business plan. What's your estimate on how much you'll grow this year? We had projected to, uh, double-digit growth for this year, and uh, we're certainly on pace to do over that for this year. That's fantastic. And are you still carrying basically the same lines this year? Yes, we haven't added anything new this year. We, we still are primarily known as a wood flooring distributor. Although we do carry, uh, we do carry uh, sheet vinyl, L, uh, VCT, and LVT, and laminate as well. Let me one last question about your business before we go to the show. Is, do you think Made in America is a factor amongst consumers today? I think so. I think consumers, all things being equal or close to being equal, I think they would prefer to buy products made in the U.S. or Canada, North American products. Well, let's go to the show. First, uh, just, you know, you're down here with, uh, there's a good mix of people down here. There's other distributors, there's contractors, some retailers, and then there's also manufacturers down here. This organization has a nice board structure in that it's set up of those three separate entities. Let's talk about the show. I know it sold out from an exhibitor standpoint, didn't it? That's correct. This is the second year in a row we've sold out the showroom floor, and this year's showroom floor was 20% larger than last year. So we have more exhibitors, more floor space, more things for the uh, uh, contractors and the distributors to see. And why do you think you're growing like this? I, I think... A lot of it has to do with the way we've restructured the show, and it was a lot has to do with we went back to the basics of what the organization was founded on. Now it's providing significant, appropriate education for our members and also showing the newest and latest and innovations in wood flooring. This is the only show that is specifically designed for wood flooring. Now one of the highlights of the show is you had a really well-known speaker. You had the former head of Southwest Airlines Howard Putnam as your keynote, right? That's correct. Yes, we, we were uh, lucky enough to get Howard to join us. Since Southwest was, came out of the Texas area, we thought it was appropriate. And uh, his message was very good because he talked about how a small regional airline competed with larger, significantly larger companies and grew to a, a level with them, and how they succeeded where they were the small player in the market. And I think that really resonated with our membership. Mm-hmm. And another thing you just said a minute ago is that one of the reasons they were successful is they kept it simple, right? Absolutely. They kept it simple. They did the basic things to grow their business. You know, and a lot of it has to do with customer service, mm-hmm. you know, doing, helping the customer have a good experience air flying. And if we have our customers give them a good experience, they'll continue to you know, purchase from us. Now, people that don't normally come to this show, how many people usually come to this show? I know you don't have the stats yet, but generally, how many people attend this show? Uh, we'll, we're, this year, we'll probably be around 2,700, 2,800 attendees. And so the, the room block that you had reserved is completely booked this time, right? We completely sold out the room block this year, as we did last year. So uh, hopefully, we'll be continue on this pace next year as well. Now, as you look at your legacy your, of your tenure here on the chairman of the board, uh, what, what do you want to be known for? What do you feel like you accomplished? Well, I really think that what we did as a board, it just happened to be that I was at the head of it, was I think we went back to a lot of what Howard talked about is we went back, re-looked at how we were successful years ago, what our membership wanted, and we actually asked them. And they told us what they wanted, how they wanted things done, and we went back and created a simple business plan on how to achieve those goals. And I think, to me, I don't know if it's a great legacy, but it's, I think, smart business practice. You know, nothing Howard talked about is you've got to have some no's, you know, like they don't have reserved seats on Southwest Airlines. What are some things you quit doing? 
We really looked at areas where we weren't getting membership participation. We looked at the fact that one of the big things we've changed to is a regional training program. Originally, our thought process was we have a central training facility in St. Louis, and that people would come there. Well, our membership said, no, we can't afford to do that, but we will come to education and training if you come to near us. And that's what we've done. We've completely revamped our training program now to be mobile, where we are actually regionally will be all over the country uh, this year and next year. In the meeting this morning, you laid out three or four key objectives that the group hopes to do looking forward. Give us a quick summary of that. We want to grow the wood flooring market. We want to look at, look at the board structure and the committee structure, make it nimble and appropriate for the you know the continually changing world and ensure the financial security of the association you know going in the future and that was you know obviously with the recession over the last number of years it's hurt all of associations and our businesses so we've had to really restructure our focus there and really look at ways that we can have a long-term financial success for the organization you know Michael Martin the head of this organization day to day gave a little talk this morning about collaboration. The NWFA is kind of the head of the wood flooring business. There are a lot of little splinter organizations that each carry a a certain area of responsibility, aren't there? Yes, there's one of the subcategories, obviously, is NAFM, which is basically unfinished solid markets. There's the Hardwood Plywood Veneer Association. There's a number of lumber organizations. We all group together under an umbrella of the Hardwood Federation to really work with Washington to secure the financial security and future of our in- of the hardwood industry as a whole. Yeah, and the new head of that is Don Finkel now, right? Correct. Don Finkel is the, is the chairman of that now. Yes, that's correct. You know, one last quick question. So you're stepping down. I guess, uh, as, as Neil Poland said today, uh, being past chairman is one of the best positions to have here. Uh, that's probably a relief to you. Who takes the helm next? Uh, John Lessick from Apex Wood Floors. He's a contractor, does a lot of real specialty custom products. He's based outside of a suburb of Chicago. And again, it goes, we have, because of our membership differentiation between manufacturers, distributors, and retailer contractors, we also rotate the chairmanship. And so as a distributor, now it's my turn to turn it over to John to take over as contractor, as Neil was the manufacturer before me. Well, Rick, it's great to talk to you again. We've been talking to Rick Holden, who's the outgoing chairman of the board and also the chief operating officer at Durr Flooring. And you've been listening to Kempar and 4 